Hello and welcome to another uh, tutorial from Mike Dolan Games. I'm Mike, and today we are going to add uh, some more behaviors to our um, behavior tree uh, tutorial for our Make a Space Game in Unity. And uh, before, uh, in the previous uh, tutorial, we added um, extra behaviors to our AI so that they could find a wander point, but then also um, find uh, an enemy to target. Uh, and so now we are going to add um, some attack abilities. So we are going to um, check to see if the player is in front of us or um, in our in our view, and then um, fire our weapons. So let's uh, get started. Okay. All right. So uh, one thing that I did. Um, before this tutorial started, so I added a, a second gun to the, the uh, um, AI. So uh, it's super easy to do. So here, I'll just delete this one. So this is what, uh, if you just followed along in the um, previous tutorials, you probably just have one gun here. Just duplicate it. And then go into the transform here and see how it says negative 6x. Um, just make it positive and it will put it kind of a mirror image on the side, okay? And uh, we'll make sure that our um, gun event uh, picks up both these guns instead of just the one, okay? Um, so uh, once you have that set up, uh, the other thing that I want to do is uh, I have right now a collider box on uh, this ship and uh, we're going to start doing some ray casting and things like that and having like a box like this that doesn't really match the uh, mesh is going to kind of mess with uh, the um, uh, the uh, ray casting so let's remove it and I'm going to put it right on uh, the mesh uh, object so it's inside the ship here and mesh collider and then I'm going to make the mesh collider convex, okay? Um, making it convex will kind of give it the shape of the ship, but uh, if this was a really big ship, that would be annoying because there would be like invisible colliders that you might not, not like. So um, that's one downside of a collect, uh, convex collider. Uh, but when you, when you use convex colliders, uh, or non-convex colliders for mesh colliders, and then have them move around, Unity complains a lot. So um, with errors and things. Okay, so having this gives us better kind of hitbox shape, and then just double check your guns and make sure the barrels are kind of outside of your your um, colliders. Let's see, I think they're just outside, so hopefully that works. We can, uh, if you hold Control and click both barrels, you can move them up a little bit. All right, and that should be outside of the, uh, the collider range. Okay, so uh, once we've done that, let's go into our scripts and um, start to add some things. Okay, so open up your AI controller, all right, and we are going to, um, actually, we're, we're going to add some behaviors here, but uh, um, the previous tutorial, we had to set up a bunch of uh, sequences and things like that. And in this one now, we're going to add everything to this uh, move sequence. So we're not even going to have to worry about um, uh, doing too much in here. Okay, so I'm trying to think if there's anything that I want to add right now. And I don't think so. Okay, so um, let me make this bigger. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another behavior. And so the two behaviors that we're going to add are um, is the target visible and then uh, fire a weapon. So create a new C Sharp script. And you can, again, you can do that in the Unity editor or you can do it in, um, in Visual Studio. Just add a new file. And I'm going to do my quick snippet here. Um, oops. And uh, so this is just the basic layout here. We just need to make a class um, that derives from the BT node class that we created. 
and uh, we'll do the target visible one. So call your class is target visible. And then, okay, so that automatically does it for me there. Um, and make sure you're, if you're doing it like I'm doing it, make sure you rename it is target visible. Okay, so the basic idea of this, this is kind of a conditional, um, but it's also like a beha it's also like a behavior test because um, we're basically going to model kind of our um, AI's uh, ability to see something. So, um, and this is going to be a very super simple way to do that. Um, but uh, we can always make this more complex in the future. You could have uh, extend this so that uh, it can only check things that are on its radar, or maybe there's a nebula of dust cloud in here, so you might want to reduce the ability to see things. You could um, reduce the length of the uh, um, the raycast, things like that, so there's a certain range. Um, but this is going to be kind of a super simple implementation. So we're going to make sure that we have a behavior AI. And yeah, that's it for now. OK, so, um, so yeah, so let's keep this super simple. So make sure you bring in. my other scripts okay and then make sure you set your local instance to equal what comes through the constructor there and then uh, again our most important uh, state is the evaluate and this will have some if thens uh, okay so the first one we want to do is to check if um, get Okay, so we want a, um, so we have get target position. I think we have set target, right, from our previous tutorial. So we don't have a get target yet. So we need a way to get access to our target. Um, and I'll just finish my thought here. We're going to have on our AI a way to get the target to figure out if um, we have a target or not. If our target equals null, we're just going to return BT node state failure. Okay, so we don't want to have to do any extra raycasts if we don't need to. Um, so we're going to do that. And we need to add this to our um, behavior AI interface. So I am going to um, yeah, I'm just going to generate one. Okay, and then we'll go into our behavior AI here. Um, we have our get target. We're going to return the game object of get target. Okay. Um, so this is in our BA behavior AI interface. And uh, if you remember interfaces, whatever influence this interface has to implement all these different methods. Um, so this get target method needs to be implemented where we use behavior interface. And that's the AI controller. Okay. This uses behavior um, AI. So if we hover over in Visual Studio, click, just implement the interface, go down to the bottom, and we have our get target. Now, if you're wondering what get target's going to do, it's going to return the target. All right? So we have a global variable in here, just called target. We're going to return it. That's it. So save that. Go back to your is target visible script. Now we have this working. Okay, so we're just going to check if it's null, then we don't want to do anything, just return it as a failure. We don't have a way of checking. And uh, the reason uh, we have to do this is because we're going to just throw it right into our move script. Um, we're currently grouping in a bunch of behaviors together, attacking and moving to wander points. Um, in a bigger behavior tree, you might have these things completely separated out, but uh, right now we can kind of just combine them. So uh, we're going to check these uh, in the sequence. We're going to check. Um, these kind of attack methods, even if we don't have a target, we're just going to say, "Oh, we have." Let's just run it, and we'll just have kind of default failures if we don't do it. So, okay. So after this, we are going to create a quick raycast hit object, just call it hit, 
And then we're going to make an if statement. And we're going to use the physics, unity physics dot raycast. So we're going to generate a raycast um, from the from the position of our AI. So ha, we have to do another um, method here for our AI. We need to get the position because we don't have a way of getting position from this generic behavior tree. Um, and then we're also going to add another method to our behavior AI uh, called get transform. And really, if you get the transform, you could derive the position yeah, you know what? We're going to do this. We're going to get transform forward, comma, out, hit, and we're just going to say they have a range of a thousand. So this is where you could um, make a range of how far you want them to be able to see. Okay, so in here, let's copy this actually. And this was this got auto completed incorrectly. Um, so my AI get transform. Dot position. Okay, so we're going to make a um, another method inside our AI called get transform. And quickly do that. Just want to save myself some trouble here. All right, generate it. Okay. Now let's go to behavior AI. We have our get transform, um, and here we're going to return transform. All right. So save your behavior AI. Go to your AI controller, and let's, we'll just type it in here, public transform, um, get transform, and then we're just going to return our um, new object dot transform. Okay, so we're returning the transform that's attached to this um, AI controller. Okay, so hopefully the AI controller is attached to the ship. Um, that's something we need to think about in the future. Um, since uh, I do have kind of a piloting type system, the player is actually not on the ship that he flies or she flies. Um, so I would think that I would want to treat the AI the same way. Um, so we'd have to figure this out. We might be like um, trying to. Uh, access the ship object that the AI transform control the AI controller is like controlling or something. But right now it's right on the uh, the ship, so we'll leave it here for now. And then when we get more into pilot stuff and switching ships and things like that, we might have to change some of this AI. Okay, um, we have this. Okay, so we have our get transform. All right, save your AI controller again. Go back to the is target visible. Okay, so there was a few things that we needed to do in the AI controller to get this to work. Uh, now, we have a raycast. We're raycasting from our position in a forward direction. So wherever we're facing, we want to make sure that our AI is facing the thing that it wants to attack. Okay? Now, if... So this is only going to go into the if statement if uh, we hit something. Okay? But now we have to check if we hit the thing we want to hit. So hit dot um, collider. So every hit um, raycast hit has a collider um, that they collide with, and then we're going to get the transform. And this is kind of tricky. Uh, we're going to get the transform, uh, and then uh, we would normally just grab like the game object, but um, since what I just did was uh, well, will this work? Yeah, this is how we're going to set up our our um, colliders for now. Um, so the the mesh that you would have your collider on is not uh, necessarily the same object that uh, the um, target's going to be. So um, it's a couple um, layers down. Uh, so if we hit an object, it's going to return the game object here, um, and it doesn't it might not necessarily return like the parent, the total parent object. You might get like the the mesh object. Um, so we want to go back up the, the chain until we get to the root game object because that's what we're actually setting our targeting to. Uh, I hope that makes sense. I can. So like this enemy ship, we just did this. So this enemy ship is what would be targeted by any other AI or the player. 
but when the raycast comes in, it's going to hit the collider, the collision box here. But the collision box is not on the main parent object, it's down here on ship. So when the raycast hits the ship here, it's gonna we're we're writing a script that's gonna say, okay, find the root parent of my game object. So it's gonna go up here and then up here. And it's gonna go to here, and that's where we're gonna check our match, because that's what our AI is actually looking to target. It's targeting these um, these objects. So okay, so that's what we're doing with that. That's why we're we're doing that. Okay, yep. All right. So if we hit the game object root, so now we're going to compare um, equals my AI dot get target. So so now we're just looking at our target, seeing if we um, hit what we wanted to hit, and if we did, we're going to return continued success. Okay. Um, And then we can get rid of this one and here. Okay, so, and we'll just keep the else here the way that I had it before. So now, if we, uh, I'm gonna put a semicolon there, we can return success here if we hit what we wanted to hit, uh, or else we'll return failure. And I don't think there's a way to get out of this, but this doesn't like it, so not all pass. If else. Technically, I think all paths are correct here, but we will. Oh yeah. So I guess if um this doesn't return, then we have to have another failure. So we'll just put failure at the bottom. Okay. So after this else, put one here. Okay. Now we're returning properly. All right. This is going to allow us to find our our enemy, or our AI to find our player. Okay. So now we need the most exciting um, script, and that is our attack script. So let's create another C sharp script. And we're going to call this one Fire Weapon Task. OK, so Fire Weapon Task. So make sure you create another uh, another class, BT Node. Um, make sure you name it correctly. Fire Weapon. Fire Weapon Task. No, Fire Weapon Task. OK, Fire Weapon. Okay. Now, in our constructor, we're going to take a few things. Well, I guess we'll define our class variables. We're going to have a um, high behavior method, my AI. We should just make this like part of the BT node class or something. Okay. Um, so we're always going to take this my AI, uh, and then we're going to take an input event because we want to be able to control are firing fire weapon okay so now in our constructor we'll set up our AI and we'll set up our input event all right so now we're going to pass in this event into this constructor and so we're going to set our AI and fire event equals. All right, so now we've set up our constructor. And in the evaluate, it's very simple. We're going to keep our if else statement here. And uh, instead of true, we're going to write if fire event does not equal null. Because I guess what if somehow the fire event doesn't get set, right? Okay, and then we will fire weapon event um, and then return success. And if not, we'll return failure. So all this is doing is uh, sending the event message back to our controller, which um, is hooked up to the 
I control our input, right? So we fire our event, we do what we need to do. Um, and uh, when we send off that message, uh, it will fire the event on the ship controller. So pretty cool. OK, so we'll save this. All right, now let's think. OK, so um, we have our two event, our two behaviors. So let's add them in. So in our move sequence, we are turning to our target and moving to our target. And we're also now going to um, use our uh, is target visible. And we'll put in our AI. And then new fire weapon task this AI and our input event and we'll just say fire I think it's called fire event let's see here fire event okay so we pass in our fire event all right so now we're moving forward we're turning and we're gonna do a fire event all right awesome so this is pretty close to what we want um, let's think is there anything else we need to do um, in our ship controller, we have our weapons here, right? We have a weapon array. And in our start, we actually um, grab the weapons and put them in. Okay, and then in our fire weapon, we say fire weapons length is greater than zero. Fire my first weapon. So uh, we may want to change this, right, to have kind of a better, um, like a like a for loop, right? So yeah. So let's do that right now. And this is actually uh, things that I'm planning on moving into the weapon controller script that we haven't created yet. Um, but I thought it would be fun to kind of add some AI first. So. So for an i equals zero, i is less than my weapons dot length, comma i plus plus. And then now we'll just instead of firing this one weapon, oops. Okay. So instead of firing this one weapon, we'll fire all the weapons in our list. So the more weapons you add to the ship, the more they should all just fire on this fire event. Um, obviously, this probably isn't the way you want it to work in the game, but uh, to make the weapons more complex, we need a, uh, a weapon controller. OK, let's see. I think that's all we need. We have our target target. We got our fire weapon. Let's see what happens. All right. Let's pull this back up. Oops. Thanks. All right, so um, let's, yeah, we don't have any errors, so that's good. And save this. Our player ship. Okay, so everything should be, all right, he's flying around. Looks like he's chosen to find a uh, water point. Oh, he's shooting himself, that's good. But he is firing. Um, He's moving a little fast for uh, his bullets. <laughs> and I think we don't have a damageable on our our player ship. Let's see. Do not. Uh, so let's add some damage. Let's see if we can um, get destroyed by him. I'm gonna make it very very simple here, and then prefabs. Do we have an explosion system here? Yeah. All right, let's just see what happens if he hits us. He might blow himself up. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> OK, that was us exploding. All right, so that worked. And we have some errors because we blew up. OK, so uh, there you have it. We've added our um, 
our ship um, behavior AI to um, attack a player. And uh, you can now actually set this up to um, uh, attack other uh, enemy ships and things like that too. So you could duplicate your, your um, AI and say, maybe this is not an AI ship anymore, this is a good ship. And we will make him or her a player. And then we'll make the enemy faction enemy faction. OK, so now this good ship is on our player's team. Now watch. Let's see what happens. They just tried to attack each other, <laughs> maybe. Let's see what they do. OK, so yeah, so our good player is attacking the bad guy, and the bad guy is attacking us. There you go. Ooh, they are moving really fast. Um, yeah, there is actually one quick fix that we could do to our uh, ship controller. Um, I was noticing this in our last uh, demo where our ships were moving like too slow, and I didn't like that, so I pumped up the speed a little bit and couldn't figure out what was up. Um, so one of the things that uh, I um, thought of adding was a... Uh, um, like a max velocity to our ship controller. So right now we just kind of uh, let our um, our ships move as fast as possible basically and then we kind of let drag deal with it. So um, that's not super great. So uh, we can add a float max velocity and I just make it 500. Um, I'm pretty sure this is like meters per second, so um, it's pretty fast. Uh, I haven't looked up what goes um, 500 meters per second, but um, it's pretty fast for this game. Okay, so if we have our our max velocity at 500, then we just need to go into um, where our thrust is, our forward thrust, which is right here. Okay. So we're adding force here, but we can check if my rigid body dot velocity dot magnitude. Okay, so the magnitude is basically kind of like the um, the kind of total speed of the ship is greater than the max velocity. Um, so now we're just saying if we went got over our max velocity, then we're going to and we can actually just set our velocity. Um, to equal our max velocity. So but you need to um, multiply by like our normalized velocity because um, velocity is kind of directional, right? So um, if they're moving kind of sideways at max velocity, then you don't want to just set your uh, set your velocity to whatever our max velocity is um, without normalizing it because uh, you might just push them going straight or something like that. So um, so this will set whatever the variables are to kind of um, normalize the values between one, uh, 0 and 1 and then it will multiply by the max velocity so you'll get the thing. So if you're, you have 0 sideways velocity then you're not going to add any to the uh, by multiplying by 500 but this will correct it out. So this should work, and this will also apply to the player. Um, we can't go over 500 now. Um, I don't think. I don't know if the slide. I think the slide just takes off. Um, uh, just takes off the drag. It doesn't actually reduce the um, velocity. Okay. So if we do that, I don't think we got any errors. So let's try it. Um, they shouldn't go as fast. Yeah. So they're not. They're, they're still pretty zippy, but their max velocity should be 500, and same with us. Ooh. They're still shooting themselves, though, so we're probably going to have to fix that. Um, there's a couple things you can do. You can have kind of like time to arm for um, ordnance, and then they don't necessarily fire, uh, they don't necessarily turn on their collider right away. Um, but anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and uh, I hope you're setting up your AI to fight each other and um, experimenting with that and adding some new weapons and maybe coming up with some of your own behaviors. Uh, we can fix the uh, 
laser explosions here. <laughs> and uh, I hope you enjoy that. I think I'm going to try to fix my laser explosions right now. I think the uh, the problem is the speed of this ordinance is not fast enough, so we can make the muzzle velocity 600. Let's try it. So, yeah, again, thank you for watching. Um, if you if you do use this tutorial, I'd love to see what you've uh, what you've made. It seems like it's not happening as much. So that's good. Um, so if you want to send me a link, uh, either you can uh, find me on Twitter um, uh, or uh, make a comment on the video. And uh, I'd love to see what people are making with this and if they're um, enjoying it. And uh, if you make a giant space battle, uh, it'd be pretty cool to see. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, subscribe, share, like this video, and I'll see you on the next one.